Greetings, we are just a few weeks away from the official first day of spring, and I am so ready for longer days and warmer weather. But in the meantime, may I present a week's worth of soup recipes to help keep you warm through the end of winter. These soups are all vegan, of course, and they also happen to be easy to make and budget-friendly, so hopefully they inspire you to make yourself a bowl of something cozy this week. First up, we're gonna start off with a personal favorite, which is a roasted tomato and basil soup. I think this is the perfect soup to cozy up with on a cold day. It's super easy to make, and of course you gotta serve it with grilled cheese. For this recipe, you need somewhere between two and three pounds of tomatoes. I usually use Roma tomatoes, but you can use a different kind or even a variety of tomatoes, whatever you have on hand. Just give them a really thorough rinse. And then if I'm using Roma tomatoes or some other kind of medium sized tomato, I'll usually just quarter them. But if you're using particularly large tomatoes, you can cut them further. Then I also like to take a moment to remove the little tough piece where the stem attaches. And then I will also roughly chop up an onion. This recipe is great because it really is so flexible and precise measurements aren't necessary. So you can add however large of an onion you like or even omit the onion altogether if you prefer. I had some leftover red onion to use up so I threw that in as well as one small yellow onion. The tomatoes and onions go into a baking tray along with several cloves of garlic. I leave them whole, but I do just slice off the rough tip of the garlic clove. Is there a specific word for that part of it? I also had some cherry tomatoes that were kind of starting to look a little sad, so I just chuck those in to use them up. And on that note, you can also feel free to add in some other vegetables. Maybe you have some that are close to going bad in your fridge that you want to use up. I oftentimes will add in some red bell peppers. You could add in butternut squash or zucchini if you like. Whatever you've got in there, generously drizzle it with olive oil and then season liberally with salt and pepper. Give those a toss and pop those in an oven at 425 degrees. You're gonna let those roast for about an hour until the tomatoes are juicy and bubbly and the onions are starting to pick up some of that golden brown color. Now transfer all of that goodness to a pot and make sure to add all the juice from the bottom of the baking pan. You don't wanna waste any of that flavor. Now the recipe, as I have it written out on my blog, sarahsvegankitchen.com, linked down below, calls for the addition of some cashew cream to make the soup extra thick and creamy. And that's how I traditionally make it, but actually this time around, to make it a little more budget friendly and to boost the protein content, I instead used a can of white beans. And these serve a similar purpose of thickening the soup, but the result is a little less rich and velvety than with the cashew cream. Still delicious though, in my opinion. I also added veggie broth and a chicken style bouillon cube to boost the umami, and then plenty of freshly chopped basil. You can also pop in some oregano if you like as well, maybe some thyme, bring that up to a gentle simmer, and then it's time to puree the soup. You can use an immersion blender, it's probably the easiest way, just blend it directly in the pot as I'm demonstrating here. Of course you have the option to leave it as chunky as you like, but if you prefer a perfectly smooth tomato soup, I recommend using a blender. This soup is seriously so easy to make, it's so flavorful, and of course I always like to serve mine with a good old-fashioned grilled cheese sandwich. I have been working on perfecting my sourdough sandwich loaf. I still have a few improvements to make before I publish the recipe on the blog, but I did whip up a batch specifically to make the grilled cheeses on. And we used a combination of Daya cheddar and I believe follow your heart mozzarella slices for our sandwiches. And I mean, vegan meat and cheese substitutes have always been kind of pricey, but especially with inflation lately, we have kind of just been going to grocery outlet once every month or so and seeing what kinds of vegan cheese they have available since their prices are so highly discounted. And we've just been using whatever vegan cheese we can find there. And I also threw in a few slices of the oven roasted tofurkey for Eric for extra protein. This is our post-workout. This We're actually having leftovers. I'm very excited. It's really good. It's really good. You can really get a lot of flavor out of really simple ingredients. As I was editing the footage, I was thinking that. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is just vegetables. It's just vegetable ingredients. Mm -hmm. mm. It tastes like a rainy day. Yeah. In a good way. I can't get over the soup. I mean, you've made tomato soup before. Is this the best iteration? I think so, yeah. I mean, the fl like the roasted tomatoes, you can tell they're roasted, and then the garlic. It's very garlicky, like there's no bite, you know? Like you could tell they've been cooked and cooked and cooked. The beans are a nice addition. I like the texture of beans though. Do you pick up the texture of the beans? I did go back and with the leftovers, I pureed them even more in the blender. I like the smoother consistency. Mm -hmm. It's more reminiscent of like Hamble's tomato soup. 
Originally it was a little bit chunkier, mm -hmm. just with the immersion blender. Mm -hmm. I pick up on the texture of the beans very mildly. Before we started rolling for this, Sarah was like, oh no. And I was like, what happened? She was like, I cut your sandwich the same way I cut my sandwich, not the way you like your sandwich is cut. Mm -hmm. Because for me, you probably make them two big triangles, just mm -hmm. one cut diagonally. But instead, as you can see, they're cut into four little triangles. And I was like, honey, it's literally <laughs> fine. <laughs> Isn't it funny how tomato soup is kind of like marinara sauce, but milder? It's like the same flavors. Mm -hmm. Remember once you made tomato soup and we had a lot of leftovers and we didn't want to keep eating it as soup? Oh. You were bored of it and you mixed it into pasta and you like added vegan parm or something. That was good. Okay, this next dish is technically a stew. I kind of categorize stews and soups together. I mean, they serve the same purpose for me, at least emotionally. This is the spiced chickpea stew with coconut and turmeric that went viral during the early days of the pandemic, I believe. And it's from Alison Roman, published in the New York Times. For this one, we're gonna start out by adding a generous amount of olive oil to a pan over medium high heat. Add in your chopped onions, as well as plenty of fresh minced ginger and garlic. Give that a stir and season that liberally with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. And we're gonna saute those aromatics for a few minutes until the onion is translucent. In the meantime, go ahead and take a can of chickpeas. Actually, the full written recipe is for two cans. I cut it in half because I didn't wanna have a ton of leftovers. So just know that everything I'm showing here is half the amount written out on the New York Times website. Give your chickpeas a thorough rinse and then add those into your aromatics. Add in some red pepper flakes to preference, as well as some ground turmeric. And we're gonna pan fry this mixture in the olive oil until the chickpeas start to take on a dark golden brown color and start to crisp up a little bit in certain areas. And a quick note, I did make this recipe twice. The first time I used my little Dutch oven and I had a lot of sticking to the bottom of it because it's not nonstick and there's a lot of starch in the chickpeas. So the second time around, I made it in a nonstick skillet as you can see here. And this step was a lot easier to get the chickpeas kind of crispy without it all building up on the bottom of the pan. Once the chickpeas are browned and lightly crispy, you wanna remove some of them to save to top the stew later and then give the remaining chickpeas a light mash to release some of the starches to help thicken the stew. And then I added in my vegetable broth as well as one can of full fat coconut milk. From here on out, it's pretty smooth sailing. You just want to bring it to a simmer and let it reduce and thicken to your preference. So you could leave it quite brothy if you prefer, or you can thicken it so it's more stew-like and note that it does thicken a little bit further as it cools. And especially if you have leftovers, those will be quite thick. Once you're happy with the consistency of the stew, you'll add in your greens. So the recipe recommends using Swiss chard or kale. And I went with kale, cause I love kale. Stir that through and then let it just simmer for a few extra minutes until the kale is as tender as you like. The recipe does recommend serving this with some fresh pita bread with a little bit of yogurt and fresh mint. Personally, my favorite way to enjoy it is just with a side of basmati rice to bulk it up and kind of make it more of a complete meal. And then don't forget to top it with those chickpeas that we reserved from earlier. So this one I have already tasted because this is my second time making it. It is so thick and creamy. So I actually like this a lot more than I was initially expecting to. I'm not the biggest fan of the flavor of turmeric, but I do like small amounts of turmeric in my savory food, like with other curry spices, cumin, coriander. And I will say I did cut down the amount of turmeric I added the second time I made it. I used about half of what she recommended. She does have a video on her YouTube channel making this. And a lot of the top rated comments are from people who are Indian. And of course they use turmeric a lot in their cooking. And a lot of those comments did recommend that you reduce the amount of turmeric as well because too much turmeric tends to make things kind of bitter. It's got like a little bit of heat. It honestly came together so quickly. Need to give it some time to simmer and thicken, but as far as like prep work and actual hands-on time, very easy and quick. I think this would be great with extra vegetables added. I think if I make it again, I'll probably add some cauliflower, some sweet potato, maybe even some bell pepper would be really good in this. I will say it's very rich. It has a lot of coconut milk in there. So if you're someone like me, like I can't do super rich fatty foods without my tummy being upset. That's why I'm kind of bulking it up with the rice. If you're kind of in the same boat, I would say use like half the amount of coconut milk or even use like light coconut milk 
I, I never thought the day would come when I would recommend light coconut milk over full fat coconut milk, but maybe in this recipe it might work. But yeah, I think it's very good, definitely worth a try. Really budget friendly and easy, and I think it goes really well with rice. This next recipe is a veganized version of avko lemono soup, which is a classic Greek chicken soup that's extra creamy and lemony. Traditionally, it contains some rice or orzo. This is a dish I've never actually tried before, but I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, so I'm using the recipe from the Vegan Cocote blog. Check that out if you want to give it a try yourself. Add a few tablespoons of olive oil to a pot over a medium-high heat. Then add in chopped celery, carrots, and onions, and saute those for a few minutes until the onion is translucent. At this point, we'll add in plenty of minced garlic, as well as some oregano and thyme. The recipe did call for fresh thyme, but I don't cook with thyme that often, especially fresh thyme, so I didn't want to buy a whole container of it and then have most of it go to waste. So I just went ahead and used dried thyme because I already had some in my pantry, but I'm sure it would be even more delicious with the fresh stuff. Then add some vegetable broth as well as a can of chickpeas. Drain those and give them a thorough rinse before adding them into the soup. Traditionally, this recipe is a chicken soup, so it contains shredded chicken, and I did consider buying a vegan chicken substitute, something like Daring, but honestly, I haven't been eating many faux meats lately, and I've been really enjoying focusing more on whole plant foods again, so I decided to just go ahead and stick with the chickpeas. Bring that up to a boil, and then you're gonna add in your orzo. Make sure to stir so it doesn't stick together. I've also seen people use rice in this recipe, so that's an option, and you're gonna let that cook for about 10 minutes or until the orzo is tender. Traditionally, you would add eggs to the soup. The name of Golemono, as I understand it, actually refers to a Greek sauce made from whisked eggs, lemon, and warm broth. It's used to dress vegetables or fish, or it's added to soup to thicken it and impart a super rich and silky texture. But this veganized version substitutes in tahini for the eggs. I'd actually be interested to try this again using an egg substitute like just egg. But we're whisking a few tablespoons of tahini together with the juice of one large lemon, as well as a few tablespoons of vegetable broth. And once the pasta is tender, we're adding the tahini mixture into the soup and stirring it and it'll start to thicken. We also have a bunch of fresh spinach, give that a thorough wash and roughly chop it. And we are adding that into the soup, stirring it through and allowing it to wilt without cooking it too much. We don't want to lose that beautiful vibrant green color. And the last thing we're adding is plenty of fresh chopped dill. At this point, the soup smelled so fragrant and herby and delicious. I was really excited to try it out. I did watch a few videos of Greek home chefs making authentic avgolemono, not vegan, and it seems like this version comes out much more kind of like a stew. So I would like to make it again and play around with the ratios a little bit to make it more closely resemble the real thing. Okay, we're gonna do a little taste test. It smells incredible. Trying to get a little bit of everything. It is so flavorful. It's really unlike anything I've ever made before. You guys might know. I'm very minimal when it comes to my use of herbs. And I do use lemon juice a lot, but I never make it like front and center in the recipe. And it's super lemony, super herby. I love the dill. And it's like very hearty with the pasta and the chickpeas. Super creamy combination of the tahini and also I think the starch from cooking the orzo directly in the soup is thickening it. It's really good. Kind of like an elevated chicken noodle soup. This one gets a two thumbs up from me. You should definitely try it. I'll link it down below. I'm ready for my close up and my soup. Thank you. Okay, Eric has had the real thing. Mm -hmm. This Greek diner that we'd always get food at growing up we would always get this as like a shared soup for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Mm -hmm. The lemon and the dill, really very nostalgic. Oh, it's so good. How does it stack up to the real thing? The broth is definitely brothier and less like thick and fatty. And you, you told me that there's egg in the original, mm -hmm. which makes sense why the broth would be like thicker, but it's still really, really good. Mm, the flavors are spot on. Should I make it again? Mm -hmm. Should we add it into the rotation? Mm -hmm. We should try it with just egg. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Actually. I don't know if it'll work, but 
Next up, we are making vegan sundubu chige, which is a spicy stew with soft tofu and veggies. I'm using the recipe from Rose at Cheap Lazy Vegan, so if you want to try this out for yourself, check out her video all about it linked in the description box. For this recipe, let's get a little prep work out of the way first. The first thing is to make a kelp broth by steeping some kombu seaweed and some dried shiitake mushrooms in boiling water. This is something I do often when I'm making miso soup or homemade broth for ramen, and I would imagine you could make a dashi with yondu if you happen to have that in your pantry. I just about doubled the quantities to make a big batch, and I honestly just ate it over the course of the rest of the day. For veggies, I diced up a white onion, and I also minced up plenty of garlic. Then I diced up a few zucchinis, and Rose recommends king oyster mushrooms for this dish. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on any. I'd say your best bet is to probably check your local Asian market if you have one. But I was able to find these beautiful shiitake mushrooms, which I chopped up for this dish. I also found these bunashi meji mushrooms. These are really interesting. Their flavor is unlike any other mushrooms I've ever tried. They're kind of sweet. And I just chopped those up as well. Now to cook, drizzle some oil in a pan. I'm using a little avocado oil just because that's the only neutral oil I have. Then add in the diced onions and garlic, as well as some gochugaru or Korean red pepper flakes and saute until the onions are tender. Now I bought this huge bag of gochugaru at my Asian market a few years ago at this point. I got it to make kimchi and I'm still working through it. I think it's lost some of the usual striking red color over time, but it's still really spicy and flavorful. So hopefully it's still okay. <laughs> You can deglaze the pan with some of the kelp broth if it starts to stick. And once the onions are tender, we can add in the veggies and the broth and bring all of that up to a boil. Then it's at this point where we add our tofu. Now, if you watch Rose's video, you'll see there's a specific type of soft tofu that comes in a tube that's traditionally used in sundubu. Unfortunately, this is the only variety I was able to find. It's a little firmer than is ideal, but hey, we make do with what we've got. Break that up into the stew and let it simmer for a few minutes to warm through. And then I added in a few tablespoons of toasted sesame oil for flavor. And I added a big handful of fresh sliced scallions. I also seasoned it with some salt as well as a little bit of soy sauce. And like I said, I made a big pot of this and I ended up eating it for lunch and dinner. For lunch, I had it with a side of steamed rice. And then for dinner, I actually ended up serving it with some ramen noodles. I just stole the noodles from a packet of top ramen and you guys, it was so good. I highly recommend. Taste test for the sundubu. So I added ramen noodles. This is the second time I'm eating it. It's so flavorful. It is quite spicy. I like spicy food though. Definitely adjust the amount of the red pepper flakes if you're sensitive to spice. Tofu and veggies. You really do get so much flavor from the kelp and shiitake broth. If you don't have those ingredients, by the way, and you don't want to hunt them down, if you don't have like a good Asian market near you, this is the product that I mentioned. You could use this as a substitution. It's called Yondu. It's like an all-purpose umami seasoning and you can use it to make really quick broths. And you can pick this up on Amazon. It's really inexpensive. But if you do have the dried shiitakes and the konpu, it's so delicious. I really wish I had been able to find the right kind of tofu. Even with this like silken firm, it's pretty good. Two thumbs up for me. This soup was kind of a fridge clean out mechanism. I think making super stew is such a great way to use up any leftover produce before grocery shopping, especially to make sure you're not wasting any veggies or herbs that are maybe looking a little wilted or sad, but are technically still edible. I had some celery, carrots, potatoes, and kale to use up. And so essentially I just made a vegan chicken noodle soup with these ingredients. It's extremely easy to make. You just want to saute your mirepoix in some olive oil or vegan butter if you want to make it taste extra delicious. And I had a few russet potatoes to use up that were starting to kind of like sprout a tiny bit and those I just peeled and cubed. Then add in veggie broth. I actually used some of the better than bouillon no chicken base, which is very delicious. Tossed in a few bay leaves. Also added in a bunch of kale. A few months back, I had a roasted garlic noodle soup video go viral. And I had also added kale to that soup. And I was surprised at how many people truly hate kale with a passion. I guess I understand. I mean, it's bitter, but personally kale is one of my favorite vegetables. Like I have been known to eat buckets of kale salad in a sitting. You can use spinach if you're not a kale person though. 
I serve this soup with some cooked pasta and some rehydrated soy curls. You could mix them directly into the soup. I just like to keep them separate, personal preference, just so they don't absorb too much of the broth. And then I can add in as much as I like, and Eric usually adds a lot of extra pasta and soy curls to his, so we can both kind of tailor our bowls to our preferences. This is the one soup I didn't film a taste test segment for because it wasn't really a real recipe, but it was delicious. And I'll link the roasted garlic noodle soup on my blog down below if you wanna make something kind of similar, but like a little more special. And that wraps up our week of cozy vegan soup recipes. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this gives you some inspiration. And if it did, I would be so grateful if you could give this video a like and maybe leave a comment down below which recipe was your favorite. Subscribe for more vegan recipes and I'll see you in my next video.